Okay, I had three requests for this today, and I've also had a few other requests in the past for this, so this must be a really hot operating system. I'm looking at Mandriva 2011. Now, interestingly enough, uh, this used to be called Mandrake uh, back in the, uh, hmm, I want to say uh, early 90s. And I gave this a try, and this was one of the first Linux distributions that was advertised as being fairly easy for beginners. And it is a fork of Red Hat. We're going to look at it right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. I have had three requests for this today, and so I actually bumped this up in my queue. We are looking at Mandriva. I'm just running this from the live CD. This is the free version. They also have a paid version where you get a few extra applications that normally you could get for free, just that you have to find them, compile them, or install them. And you also get documentation if you want. But at any rate, let's have a look at this and see what you get. Interestingly enough, I remember when this was called Mandrake Linux. And I tried this many years ago. Uh, it had an older version of KDE on it that I actually liked. Um, a lot more than what uh, KDE has, involved, has evolved into now. But still, nonetheless, KDE is a nice desktop environment. Um, it is visually visually uh, pleasing. Um, it uses more resources than uh, like Enlightenment would use, that sort of thing. Uh, but let's go ahead and uh, have a look and see what you get. Okay, first, we have this icon down here where you can add widgets and that sort of thing, much the same as you have right here where you can add a panel, you can add widgets, and there's all kinds of activities that you can work with here. Okay, and then down here you got the time and a calendar, your network interface, your volume control, your most recent device that you had plugged in, your clipboard contents, a Mandriva sync client, I don't have anything plugged into here, so it's saying no medium found. Okay, uh, notifications and jobs here. This is a stack folder for your downloads. Interesting. Okay, obviously the folder is empty here. And then we have another stack folder, and this one's for documents. Obviously, we didn't put anything in there, but that's kind of neat that they put that there for us. Okay, and then here you can configure your desktop from this control. You have access to the Clementine music player, a nice uh, alternative for Rhythmbox. You have access to a Mozilla Thunderbird, probably the best email client for Linux that's running right now. Then of course you have Copeat, the instant messenger for KDE. You get the Firefox web browser and of course the Dolphin File Manager. Okay, now, unlike other KDE distributions that I have seen, uh, normally they have a uh, start menu that would appear when you uh, press this button here. Uh, that, that is, that kind of resembles what they, you know, um, in a way, kind of represents or resembles uh, the uh, start menu found in uh, Windows 7 or Windows Vista, but this one uh, looks like the uh, same thing that you would see in uh, GNOME 3 or Unity, to a degree, mind you. 
Okay, you have a quick shortcut to configure your computer. K3B for burning disks. K-Write, which is your uh, like a notepad program. K-Calc and Shotwell. And then places, you can go to Home, Network, Root, or Trash. And then a recent documents area. I haven't opened anything, so we won't see recent documents there. We can also lock the screen or log out of the computer from here. Then we can go, go into applications, and let's have a look and see what you get. All right, in Internet, you get Blue Devil, Chokwak, Firefox, KGET, KNET Attach, Conqueror, KPPP, KRDC, KRFB, KTorrent, Mozilla Thunderbird, Network Center, and then VPNPTP. Not sure what some of these are because I, I fell in love with GNOME when I switched to Linux and didn't really. Uh, choose to play around much with KDE. But if I were to go to KDE, I'd, pro I'd probably go with this one, especially if I could get Compiz working well with it. Okay, and then in Office, you get LibreOffice Calc, LibreOffice Draw, LibreOffice Impress, LibreOffice Math, LibreOffice Writer, and of course, uh, the main LibreOffice suite here. In Graphics, you get Gwenview, Color Chooser, Color Paint, K Snapshot, Ocular. I think that's an OCR, if I'm not mistaken. And then you get Shotwell. And Sound and Video, Clementine, K Mix, Pulse Audio Volume Control, SM Player, AU Mix, and then the PTV Video Editor. In Tools, you can configure your computer, configure your desktop. Dolphin, Epson Inkjet Printer Manager, K3B for burning disks, KR and R, I believe this is the um, screen resolution tool, a Wallet Manager, Lexmark Printer Manager, Manage Printing Jobs, you have a Backup Utility, the Networking Center, I wish this were just a little bit wider. It would adjust a little bit better to my screen so I can read all these. Printing, Pulse Audio Preferences, System Monitor. We've already covered this one. Jovi, Arcon, I have no idea. We have a Live Install, KWrite, Console, KNotes, Clipper, and KCalc. Then you also get a Root Terminal. Uh, which is uh, which is a separate uh, a separate terminal. I remember using this some time ago. In games, you get Capman, Collision, K Mines, and K Netwalk. And then in time frame, okay. Well, we don't have uh, the Nepomuk installed yet. But in terms of being an easy operating system to use, I imagine this would probably be just about as easy as uh, any of them can be. And I do remember that that Mandrake was fairly easy to use years ago when I tried it. I played with it for a little while. And I also remembered that when I uh, used it years ago, they sent me a lot of email asking me to uh, buy support for it. But the thing is, um, like I said, when I tried these Linux distributions in years past, Wine hadn't really matured much, and it didn't run much of anything, and that was kind of a deal breaker because I couldn't get all my hardware working with it. But this looks like it has matured quite a bit. It has come a long way, and I like the way that KDE is actually set up on this one, and if I were going to go with KDE, I think I would actually like this especially if I could get the Compiz settings to work with this. I'm sure I missed out a number of things on, on this uh, distribution, but I did want to cover it because I've had a lot of requests for it. Um, if you have any questions or suggestions or anything you would like to add, 
please put them in the space below. I'll try my best to respond to them. But also, uh, if I miss anything, it would be to the benefit of anybody who's watching this video. Uh, please hit like and subscribe and uh, tell your friends about Spatry's Cup of Linux. I still have a long way to go to fill out my queue. I still have a number of requests that I'm working on and uh, I'm getting to a point where it's been a long day already here so I'm probably going to shut the video editor down for a while but I will be cranking out a bunch more videos tomorrow so you can expect uh, more goodies heading your way here on Spatry's Cup of Linux. Mm -hmm.